points from the red curve, then this is the residuals that you get. So we're above the curve here, we're below the curve here, below the curve here. So that's what you see. You see the minimum um, in 2007, and also the, the minimum, uh, the, the, the overall minimum in 2012 here. And what you can see is if you do a straight line fit, you get um, it going to zero basically uh, between 2030 and 2035. Um, if you take out the last three years, for example, and you just fit a curve here, you get it going before 2020. Um, if you just take from about 2000 to the present and do a best fit, maybe 2025. Um, we've, so it's, it's really hard to make a call on the precise time, but all of the data is suggesting that we will lose the sea ice completely. Um, basically, it's a, very, it's a highly nonlinear process, and as the nonlinear feedbacks uh, kick in, uh, the ice is getting thinner and thinner, and it's the sort of thing where it could be there today, gone tomorrow. So if it happens before 2020, um, I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, I expect it still to happen around the 2020 time frame. So what we'll do is look at all of the months now. Of course, this minimum occurs in September of each year. Um, so what we show here is the September curve is this lower green curve. That's the curve that was on the previous um, plot. Um, and then we have, this is the August curve just above it. And then the blue is the October curve. So those are the months bracketing September. Um, and you can see the trend lines for those curves uh, getting up to getting to uh, about uh, something like 2 million, uh, 2,000 uh, cubic kilometers of ice uh, by about 2020. Uh, but when you get down to these sort of numbers, uh, you can conceivably see the ice shrinking back and shrinking back, and then the whole flow, the whole ice sheet could, you know, if the winds are, in, are unlucky in a particular year, then that whole ice sheet can just basically leave the Arctic into the Atlantic and, and get destroyed. So it's, it's uh, like I said, you know, you can make a call probably as good as me based on this data as to when you think things are going. But what is important here is all of the months are having, there's, there's less ice volume in all of the months and the curve is following an exponential trend down is the best fit and uh, it's on its way, we're on our way quickly to a um, to a, a blue uh, a blue ocean Arctic. Uh, the other thing to, to note is that you know once let's say the zero mark was here, okay so what would happen is is we start we zero or, or let's say at 10 here. let's say the zero mark was here. So we start uh, losing ice. Uh, we have the blue ocean event in September 1st. And then, and then a year or two later, in uh, August and October, and then a few years later, in November and July, and so on. And uh, eventually, we head to an ice-free Arctic year-round. Uh, if this happens, then we've basically gone through an abrupt uh, climate change transition, and there will be no snow and ice year-round in the Arctic. This shows the uh, December uh, thicknesses of the ice, um, the effective, okay, uh, in different regions. So th these are the different years, and uh, what we've got, so you've got the thickness in meters of the ice, and this is a, in the Barents Sea. Um, it's not very thick, and uh, it's, it's uh, dropping below half a meter. Um, and then the Kara Sea comes next, and then uh, Greenland around Greenland, um, in the Chukchi Sea, and so on. So the important thing is in all regions, um, even the central Arctic Ocean, in all regions we're getting a rapid thinning of the ice. Uh, this is Arctic sea ice volume uh, just about a week ago. 
Okay, uh, January 30th, 2016. Uh, let me try to center this here. Okay, so um, this is what we've had in, in uh, okay, this, this is what we've had. So this is the value here where we are today in 2016. And these are the, thickness of the thicknesses of the ice for the various months of the year. Um, so 2012 was the previous minimum year. We dropped down to here and then uh, 2015 here and the 20, 2004 to 2013 sort of envelope is, is well, the 2004 to 2013 curve is the darker one here. And then there's an envelope of uh, plus or minus uh, of uh, two sigma, I guess. Um, this is a map showing the, another map showing the sort of the spatial distribution of Arctic uh, ice thickness and also the melt ice concentration. So what we see here is this is uh, sort of upside down from what you normally see. So Greenland's up here, Canada's over here, the Bering Strait's at the bottom here. Um, so what we see here is the, is the sea ice thickness um, so this is five meters um, going down to the green over here is uh, a meter to two meters. Um, and then the ice around the edge is not 100% ice. Um, so it, for the, for the um, this is a melt ice concentration. So around the fringes where over 50% of the ice is, the concentration of ice is 50% or less. And then it's uh, higher here because this is the amount of melt ice lost. Um, so this is uh, this light blue area, for example, uh, there's 20 to 30 percent of that region has lost the ice. So that concentration would be 70 to 80 percent. But you can see the structure in here. Um, there's not a lot of thick ice, um, and we're already into you know first into the first week of February. So the ice is not forming very quickly. Um, now that wouldn't, that's not unexpected because we've had excursions of very warm air into the Arctic. Um, this is some concentration uh, or some other thickness data. You know, this is four meters, almost four meters thick. You know, three to four meters is this region. Um, so the ice is uh, forming, but it's not very thick. Um, this is for January 31st. And then if you look for the whole month of January 2016, the average over the month, then you, it's, of course it's much thinner than what it is on the 31st, but you can see how the, how the ice is uh, thickening up um, in the Arctic. Um, this is some preliminary data on the thickness, just another way of looking at it. Um, this is from, this is back in April April 15th of 2015. Um, so it shows you, uh, the interesting thing is, is you can see the blue areas where the ice is, there's almost no ice. It's 0.3 to 0.4 meter thick. Um, and uh, so you can see the distribution of the ice and you can see that there's lots of these polinas or open areas of the water or very, very thin ice. And this is uh, showing snow depth over the ice and it's an interpolation of data from a couple different data sets but this is the thickness in in uh, meters of the snow on the ice so you can see that the there is regions here where the there, there's more snow on the ice and uh, as you go out here there's less and less snow covering the ice till you get out here and there's almost no snow covering the ice it's just uh, solid ice. Um, there is ice bridge uh, experiments where they go across the ice and measure things. Um, so this is the snow depth over the ice and you can relate this to the previous data. Um, and this is the uh, sea ice thickness uh, from the ice bridge experiments. Um, so more sea ice thickness uh, back, you know, in 2014 from, from the, uh, from this data. This is a uh, near real time Arctic sea ice thickness from Cryosat 2 for, this is uh, showing, so this is showing more uh, high, higher resolution data 
and you can see that there's a lot more structure in the ice. So although in some of the lower resolution data, it looks like the whole area is thicker ice, um, it's, there's, it's actually very, very structured. There's, there's areas that are thicker ice, but it's not very, it's not extensive. Um, uh, this is another view uh, of the Arctic sea ice thickness from Cryosat 2. Um, and this is in, this is March of 2014. So again, you know, not much red. Um, this is uh, European Space Agency uh, data. Um, and then we can get into what's happening uh, now. This is the sort of sea ice, the, the drift age, the age of the ice. So first year ice is all the blue, second year ice, third year ice, and so on. Um, the age of the ice. Now, I'm not sure if this can resolve between ridged ice and uh, older ice. So any ice, it's basically going on thickness, mostly. Um, and this is the minimum, uh, this is the minimum, uh, where are we here? Minimum extent in 2014. Um, so you can see, you know, there's not much thick ice. If there's a lot of export out the Fram Strait, then it's a particularly bad year. So right at this stage, the ice is so weak that the weather extremes are, pay, um, the, the sort of local weather conditions in the Arctic have a big, uh, are a big factor in how much ice is left in a particular year. And when the conditions, when everything's against us, we're, we're basically gonna lose the sea ice. It's getting down to that. These are just some other images of the Arctic. Um, and this is, um, this is the ice, ice type. Um, so this is showing uh, first year ice is the green, older ice um, preserved at least one summer is the red. Um, uh, regions that are ice free are over here. And these are uh, gap, big gaps in the ice here, nylas. Um, and uh, then we can get down to uh, ice thickness here. Uh, this is uh, February 5th of 2016. So this is what we look like, what it looks like this year from the US Navy uh, thickness data. But then there's some experimental thickness, which is considered to be a higher resolution than that. And what we're seeing is you can see more structure here and you can see that, you know, rather than this being such a smooth situation, it's showing more detail. And when you show more detail, it looks actually worse. Um, it looks like it's much, this, this looks like there's much less of the thicker ice than there is here. Um, and this is, but this is uh, experimental. Um, but if this is true, then we're, the ice is a lot worse off than, than even the, the, the previous data is showing. This is some more detailed data from other sources, again, showing the thickness of the ice being more structured and it's it's not when you go to higher and higher resolution we're finding out that the ice is actually weaker than we expected previously